Okay, uh, still in physical security, still on fire. And uh, we've got, uh, well, suppression systems, the different kinds of systems that uh, you will use to uh, more or less automatically um, react to a fire. Um, an awful lot of these, of course, uh, deal with water, and water does not get along with electrical equipment uh, too terribly easily. So, um, there is the um, fairly standard wet pipe system, which means that there is actually water in the pipes, and uh, as soon as the uh, uh, nozzle activates, uh, the water starts coming out. Now, um, Again, as I've, I've talked about the uh, alarm systems and the three components, the uh, sensor uh, command or communication system and the... Um, uh, oh, uh, uh, actuator. Um, and uh, the sprinkler heads that you see in uh, offices and... and warehouses and wherever, um, uh, wet pipe systems, um, basically all three components are in the one piece. You have the sensor, which is usually either a, a piece of metal that has a, a very low melting point or a piece of plastic that's going to melt when the temperature gets too hot. That, uh, controls the opening of the valve. You know, it's holding the valve shut, and as soon as it melts, the valve opens, and the actuator is the water coming out of the sprinkler and, and uh, the sprinkler head spraying it around. So um, that uh, is the standard system. Now, um, the second system, and, and one that you um, will likely find more often if electrical equipment is involved is the dry pipe system. In, in the dry pipe system, the pipes are filled with pressurized air. And when the central unit uh, senses that a, the, the pressure is reduced in the pipes, then it releases the valve for the water or starts up uh, a pump to pump water in. That gives you um, a little bit of time uh, if you need to, you know, throw a tarp over electrical equipment or something like that. Not an awful lot of time, depending on how the, the startup control system for the, the dry pipe system is. Uh, anyway, so you, you don't want to have too much water with electrical equipment. Of course, it causes corrosion, conducts electricity, um, you know. Uh, again, um, water isn't the only thing. You've got uh, the dry chemicals. Uh, again, the ABC uh, white powder. Um, the uh, additional... Um, uh, factors, uh, uh, possibilities um, with these things. Uh, you, you know, again, we've got the um, gas discharge systems. Uh, we've got the uh, metal, uh, you know, D-class uh, stuff. So, again, um, you know, look for uh, training opportunities, which are going to be fewer with these systems because they are generally built in, but at some point they need to be recharged, uh, generally speaking, and, and so you have an opportunity to let people see what happens when you discharge it. Um, uh, now, uh, maintenance, like I said, you know, main, maintenance is the opportunity to do some training, but also remember you have to do the maintenance. You know, these are physical systems. Physical systems, unlike our uh, computer systems, um, need regular maintenance. So pay attention to that. Uh, again, the, uh, the gas discharge systems, carbon dioxide, halon, halon replacements. Um, these systems are very loud. 
Um, and so they're, they're going to make a ton of noise. Um, when they go off, uh, you know, all the alarms are going to be silenced. As a matter of fact, they can do hearing damage. Now, you know, of course, it's better to damage somebody's hearing than to kill them. But, um, well, you can do that, too. Um, when they go off, it's, it's like a blast going off. And, and people have been thrown around rooms and have broken uh, arms and legs uh, when these uh, systems discharge. So, you know, be aware. Um, they do have uh, requirements and, and uh, issues for, for dealing with. Um, once again, uh, life safety is the most important thing. And so, you know, think about uh, evacuation, uh, not just drills, but... Um, you know, where are the exits? What is the signage? Um, you know, having, having drills is a good idea. Um, uh, think about the alarm volumes and replacement. Uh, I remember when I was teaching uh, one of these seminars. Um, uh, well, I've had fire alarms go off in uh, different situations teaching these things. But I remember one in particular where... Um, we heard this vague buzzing sound. And so we, uh, you know, the, the people knew that that was the fire alarm. Um, uh, basically everybody, uh, well, almost everybody in the, in the seminar uh, was from that particular company. They knew where the fire exit was, and so we headed for the fire exit. Now, the thing was that the fire alarm itself was in the exit stairwell. The, uh, it was incredibly loud in the stairwell. It wasn't particularly loud in the office, as I say. It was, you know, hard to figure out, you know, what was this sound? But going down the, the, exit stairwell it was excruciating so um you know think about what you're going to do um in terms of the alarms the placements uh you know how loud is it who do you want to reach um uh think about signs think about the people who may be in your office at the time the fire alarm goes off who may not know about your office so there's a, a number of aspects there that you have to consider in that regard.